Hello, Chat. It's Saturday, the 24th of November 2012. Chris Reardon welcoming you to today's United Kingdom talk. Yes, 24th of November, just a month now before Christmas Eve. Ding dong, merrily on high in heaven the belt. We mustn't sing Christmas carols yet. It's far too early. Too early, as I say, year in, year out. We got Christmas decorations going up in two of the pubs, three of the pubs now that I work on, a month of work at, a month before the big day. It's all wrong. Now, I can understand pubs and that. Perhaps putting up the decorations a couple of weeks earlier than the rest of us, but a month? Come on! And they, they'll always come out with the same old thing. Oh, but that's what people want. I don't believe it. Have, how many times have we heard that? You know, as an excuse from uh, a company or, or an individual. That's what they want. No, it isn't. That's what you want. Same old crap coming out of those mouths. No, that is not what we want. We do not want to see Christmas decorations Weeks and weeks before Christmas, thank you very much. It's bad enough with the supermarkets doing it, dear. Various shops I've been in with vile bits of plastic snowflakes hanging down from the ceiling, turning around in the wind. It's not Christmas. And even worse than that, boys and girls. And I, I pray to the Lord of God, I do I get down on my knees. And I, wait for it. I get down on my knees and I pray. I pray that you are not one of those people who give someone a gift before Christmas, possibly wrapped up. My, but when I give gifts, I do not wrap. I do. I what a bloody waste of money wrapping paper, ripped to shreds and thrown on. A, especially when given a, a present to a child, they're not interested in the wrapping paper, dear. Put it in a carrier bag and put a bit of tape round it. That's all they want. They just want to get that bag off as quickly as possible. Or indeed the wrapping paper. Do not waste money on wrapping. I'm telling you now weeks in advance so that you can be prepared like the scouts are. Cubs, do your best. We will do our best. We promise to give ourselves to the Queen and God and help other people and keep the scout law. Cubs, yes. I was, a, I was a cub and a scout. Anyway, so I'm getting you prepared, as it does say in the Cub Scout law. Do not waste money. Number one, wrapping paper. A complete, total and utter waste of money. If you must put paper, go and buy a nice long roll of brown parcel paper. Much cheaper. Much cheaper. No need to buy any paper at all. Put it in the carrier bag that it came on with a little sticker on the front. To, to little Paul, lots of love from mummy and daddy. That's it. They won't, I'm telling you now, they will not notice the fact that it's not been wrapped. They won't. I wrap nothing. It goes to the person concerned in a little carrier bag, a non that you can't... You can't rely on those cheap, nasty carrier bags from, from various supermarkets. Uh, I don't think Tesco's will do it for you, I'm afraid. Far too thin. And if you're going to use free, thin carrier bags, you'll have to double them up. But it's not a problem, is it? You know, when you're at the checkout, another, another little bag in the back. No one's going to notice, are they, dear? They're free. Couple of extra bags when no one's looking in your bag. That's it. Take them home. Put your presents in there. A little bit of tape around the outside. And everybody will be happy. They're not interested in the paper, dear. They want that present out as quickly as possible. They w don't waste money. And number two, I don't bother anymore with Christmas cards. Haven't done for years and years. That being said... It is nice to receive Christmas cards, yes, but not to the extent where you write out so many of them. My mum, she um, uh, started, used to start writing her uh, Christmas cards out in September. She'd have a list there and, you know, yes, people did appreciate them. But I, I, I just, especially with the price of stamps, you're going to spend an arm and a leg posting Christmas cards this year. Don't bother. Don't bother. Uh, bother, perhaps, with, with the people that you love the most, okay? 
But when it comes to all these people that you never see during the year, you rarely speak to them. It's a waste of money. It really is. So a couple of things not to bother with there, boys and girls. But yes, Christmas cards and things, uh, Christmas decorations in shops. Have you got them where you are yet? I got to that subject because um, there seems to be, and I was listening to the uh, bloke on the radio last night talking about this. Christmas decorations seem to have moved, certainly in this country, outside for a lot of people. John Lewis is saying that their sales of pre-lit outdoor weatherproof trees is up enormously this year. You just buy the tree. It's, all, you know, it's, not, it's, not, it's artificial, you know, it's not real. Stick it out in the garden, plug it in, and then, hey, presto, it lights up. Now, I'm quite liking the idea of that, to be honest. I am now considering where to record my Christmas shows. Yes. I think I might be purchasing one of those outdoor trees. I'm putting it because I've got a window. Got a window outside. Um, and, and I would sit in front of the window and there would be the tree outside lit up. What do you think of that idea? You know, oh, of course, actually, no, I wouldn't be able to record at the same time as I usually record. Excuse me a moment. Got to have a bit of a sniff. I've had a cold for a few days. I'll tell you about that in a minute. <clears throat> um, yes, actually, that might not be a good idea at all. No, because uh, I'd have to record the show at night, wouldn't I? But it would look nice if I had a couple of little trees sparkling away out in the garden. Now, I think that's quite tasteful. But what about these houses? And I know you've got them in America. I don't know how they are in Australia. These houses that really are totally and utterly lit up by Christmas lights. Not only have they got Christmas lights draped from all the windows and that, and the other, which actually, I've got to say, I quite like. A little Merry Christmas in the min window, flashing away at you, green, red, yellow, blue, in all the colours of the beautiful rainbow. Flashing away it is. I, I, even that's all right. You know, a lit Christmas tree somewhere, quite nice. But those awful inflatable Santa Clauses, I just think they're, well, they really do look cheap and tacky, don't they? Do you like those? Hey, please don't tell me. And some people have got them on their roofs. How do they do that? They are going to go and kill themselves putting these inflatable father Christmases on the roof. And how do you blow those up, for God's sake? I mean, because once you've blown something, it doesn't stay blown up forever, does it? You know, it slowly goes down. Now, all that wind that you put into it slowly uh, ebbs out. It, it, it leaches back out into the atmosphere and the Santa Claus starts going down and down uh, uh, as the air goes out. Does someone have to keep going up there and blowing it up again? Is there some sort of pump attached to the Santa Claus bum, which now and again gives it another blast of air? <laughs> like that, to keep, it, to keep it bobbing up and down on your... They really are awful. <clears throat> Horrible, horrible, inflatable things. And what about those various little lit animals that you can buy now, like a, like a nodding reindeer? You know. And this thing's lit up, and now and again its head goes down and up, and down and up, and down. <laughs> Have you got one of those lit reindeers in your garden? What else is there? I don't know. Um, I quite, quite like a little lit crib, you know, with the baby Jesus and Mary. Not that, I mean, uh, unfortunately, not everyone knows that that is the real meaning of Christmas. We are celebrating, you know, uh, the birth of Christ. Oh, no, no, it's nothing to do with that anymore, is it? No, it's all presents. That, that was, that was just, just an afterthought. No, that, that is actually what it's all about, but people forget that. So I think it's quite nice to have a little crib or something like that in the garden. Maybe a couple of live donkeys. Walking around, donkeys, and the three kings from Orient. We three kings of Orient are a couple of statues, three of the statues of those in the garden, making their way to the manger, coming to visit the baby Jesus. Eh? What have you got in your garden? What do you think about all that? <clears throat> Outdoor decorations for Christmas. Do you like them? I like some of them, but not all of them. 
I really do like the idea of a lit Christmas tree. Trouble is, if I put it out the front here, it would be nicked. You know, unless I, I could have, you know, I suppose I could attach another cable to the trunk and electrify it so some little bastard that comes along and grabs it would be electrocuted, dear. Quite like the idea of that. Would that be illegal, though? I think it probably would be. Outdoor Christmas decorations. Do you do them? And what do you think of them? Please let me know on the email address. My email is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. OK, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. My sister usually has her decorations up very early. I wouldn't be surprised if within the next week she rings me up. Oh, we've got our Christmas decorations up. And then similarly, I think she takes them down quite quickly. She doesn't wait for the 12 days of Christmas. I am very traditional. I actually don't have many Christmas decorations put up anymore. Um, really, because there's only me. Do, do you know what I mean? I'll put a couple of decorations up for you, you know, in the studio or wherever I decide to record the Christmas shows. There will be something up. Don't you worry about that, darling. A few little sparkly lights, maybe a tree or two. There will be something up. But as for myself, no, I don't really bother anymore. Um, I used to. I used to have lights going up a, one of the pine trees outside all the way up there. And some. I did, I did actually have a, a lit up reindeer. I was one of the first people to. One of the first people to have a lit up reindeer in my garden. And that thing that's on the back of the reindeer that they put the presents in. What's that called? A sleigh was a reindeer and a sleigh, and the bulbs used to go on it. Oh, it drove me mad. Trying to find out which bulb was replaced and how to replace it again. Eh? And a merry, there was a merry Christmas that used to flash away in the garden. Not anymore, though. I don't bother anymore. If there were children here, I'd probably go... I, I would actually probably do the whole cover the house in lights thing, I must admit. But what about you? Do you? Let me know, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, do you remember I told you they were having a problem uh, with the swimming pool that I use? Well, blow me down. Um, on Monday, I think it was, jumped on. I, I'd been getting text messages from the sports centre um, which told us that there was a problem with the hot water, so there was no no hot water um, in the pool and to be prepared for that. Anyway, I thought, OK, fair enough, you know. It would just be a warm shower afterwards or something like that. Excuse me. Yeah, it would be a warm shower um, and a you know slightly colder pool. So I went in there and my friend Lee the Cleaner, oh, he's a wonderful old man, he is. He's about 60, 62, something like that. And he's, he's, he's the salt of the earth type. He, 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 he loves a good conversation. I think the other the other staff are a little bit fed up with him because he doesn't doesn't seem to do much work. But it doesn't matter. That's not always necessary. These companies need to remember that you need people like that to talk to customers. This is a thing with large companies. They seem to have forgotten the fact that actually, as well as buying something from you, you need to get people in there. And if people are in there talking to you, it will attract other people in there to buy things. Lee is wonderful. I have great conversations with Lee the Clear. I'm not the only one that talks to him. It's always someone talking to him. And uh, he gets the job done. He just, you know, I think he's one of those people that don't like being told what to do, really. A little bit like myself, maybe. You know, you've got to, got to have personality. A lot of these companies are full of, uh, what would you say, clones. They want them full of clones, you know, going about doing the work and nothing else. No, no, no. Much more, much more interesting to have someone that actually talks to you and not, not talks to you like he's been taught to talk to you. You know, because a lot of these companies now send people to customer services, awareness courses and all this old crap, don't they? And they, 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 they try and teach people how to talk to you. What a load of old rubbish. You either can do it or you can't. I don't believe you can be taught at a late age how to talk to people. You, do, do you know what I mean? It should come naturally. If it's not coming naturally, then they shouldn't be given the job. It's as simple as that. You, know, you might walk into a place and uh, excuse me, could you show me where the... Well, yeah, well, it's over there, isn't it? 
If you go down that aisle five and it's down there on the right, in it, that's not how to talk to a customer. You know, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'll take you and show you. Just come this way, please. That is how to talk to a customer. And if you ain't going to talk like that to me, then you shouldn't be in a, in a job, in it. You know? Lee talks to you as a person. It comes naturally to him. I want to go to Virgin. Apart from the swimming, I actually quite look forward to a chat with him. Most of the staff there are quite good. Some of them are a little bit plastic, you know, a little bit like... Like zombies, you know, they only talk to you if you ask them a question. And I think a lot of the companies want that. They don't want their staff to, to, to talk to people. They just want them to get on with their jobs all the time. And that's not really how it was and how perhaps it should be. Anyway, so I've got in there. I'm getting ready. He says, he said, hello, Squire. How are you? You know, I'm getting my clothes. I'm getting ready. I said, hello, Lee. I said, is the water a bit cold? He said, he said, well, there's no hot water at all. I said, what, so it's, it's just a warm shower? He said, no. He said, come round and have a look. So I put me um, swimming shorts on, locked my locker, um, and uh, walked around the side, and he turned the shower on. And I immediately noticed, because it's like got two taps, you know, there's, a, there's this kind of power tap, which makes it come out slow or fast, and there's the hot and cold tap. And I immediately noticed that the hot and cold tap was turned fully onto hot. I said, is it just warm? He said, it's stone cold. Here, come here. So he turned the tap on full full power. Because uh, sometimes you might... Oh, I just banged my light there. Sometimes you have to um, run the tap for a while before the hot water comes out. So he turned that right round, and um, after two minutes... It was stone cold. I thought, well, oh my God. He said, you'll have to have a, a, a quick shower afterwards. I said, no, I won't. I said, I won't have a shower. I said, which means it's unlikely I'd really want to use the pool, to be honest. He said, oh, go on, go in there. You'll be all right. So I went downstairs, dipped my toe in the pool, and that too. It, I, I can't say it was stone cold, but it was. It certainly wasn't as warm as it usually is. It was cold. Not stone, not as cold as the shower coming out, but it was definitely cold. And, you know, I, I stood there and I looked at him and he looked at me. He said, he said, he said, go on, have a couple of lengths, you warm up. I said, I, sleep. I can't shower afterwards. And that is really rank, you know, going swimming and not being able to shower afterwards. That really is rank. Horrible. So I went back up, got got dressed and, and, and jumped on my bike and come back home again. You know, really. That was on Monday. Um, so not pleasant at all. Funny thing, funny thing is, I think it's sorted now. I got a text on Thursday um, <clears throat> telling me that the pool, that, that, that the heating and the hot water was all back on now. That was Thursday. Today's Saturday. But I haven't been. That was Monday. And then Tuesday, I got a little bit ill. It's while I was doing the quiz night, actually. I was walking around and I thought, oh, I don't feel quite well. And then that whole, virtually, whole of Wednesday, I woke up Wednesday, I did feel quite dreadful. Um, there was no sneeze or, 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 or coughing or anything like that. I just felt completely down. And I immediately remembered, and I think I told you about this, uh, the, the priest who was uh, saying Mass on Sunday at church uh, had told us he was really, Ill, and he was quite ill that day, he didn't do the communion or anything. He, and I was standing right in front of him, literally right in front of him. <laughs> and when he told us how ill he was and he shouldn't really be there, I thought, I wish I wasn't sitting here today. <laughs> and then sure enough, a couple of days later, I was ill as well. But nevertheless, um, I managed to sort out my, my, do my usual activities on Wednesdays, uh, on Wednesday, and I had to go up and feed Ronnie's cats. Uh, my best mate Ron is still on, uh, hol good God, is it that time already? My best mate Ron is still on holiday at the moment, so I'm having to go up and feed his cats. Um, and I came back, and I stayed up there about two hours, just, just laying on the settee, feeling ill with his cats. And then I came back home, and Wednesday, um, I went to bed about 2.30 in the afternoon, as soon as I got back. And then um, woke up again at uh, 6, 6.15, 6.30 for work. And actually, I felt better then. So I think it was a fairly quick thing for me. It didn't seem, I, maybe it wasn't the same thing as that the priest had, because he seemed much iller than I got. 
and then since Wednesday, as as time's gone on, I'm I'm feeling much better now. Got a little bit of a sniff. That's why I'm going to have to push my button and have a sniff. I've got a button there, button there, so that you can't hear me when I sniff. You see, um, and I feel a lot better now. Although I haven't been swimming, I thought it might be pushing it to be swimming. And actually, to be honest, while I've been feeding Ronnie's cats, now Ronnie's cats, Ronnie's house is completely the other direction of the swimming pool, and I had, I was trying to do everything. Maybe I overdid it. I was trying to feed his cats, then go swimming, then do this, then do. And to be honest, it was a little bit too much. So I've had to drop. I've actually dropped the swimming at the moment, uh, just for uh, this week. Maybe part of next week as well, because I'm I'm finding it's very hard to fit everything into my day. But uh, better now though. It's a good job actually that I didn't go swimming on the Monday in that cold water, because I would have blamed that, wouldn't I? You know, you would have blamed the fact that the water was very cold and the shower was cold. And that's why you've got a cold. And it was nothing to do with that at all. Nothing to do with that at all. All righty. It's time for, um, we've only got just one email come in today. Very disappointing. What's what's happened? Are you all emailed out, are you? And our email is from regular correspondent, the very lovely Marge in Oklahoma, USA, who says, hi, Chris. <clears throat> and all Marge is also one of my Facebook friends, so she already knows about my cold. Uh, I'm on Facebook. If you want to join me on there, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. All right. So Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. C H R I S R E A R D O N. Chris Reardon UK. Hi, Chris. Hope your cold is gone or at least doing better. Yeah, I don't know what it was. There was, as I say, there was no sneezing or anything like that. Don't know what it was. America had Thanksgiving Day here uh, on Thursday. I suppose, in a way, that's not a good memory for people in the UK, since at that time the people here were mostly trying to cut ties with England. I don't worry about it much, since most of my ancestors were already here at the time, the Native Americans. No, actually, Marge, I think you'll find that most people in the UK don't even know what Thanksgiving is. And... Um, it, it it doesn't bother us at all. It's just just a thing, just just a day to us, you know, like um like a bank holiday or something like that. Thanksgiving really doesn't mean anything to us at all. Doesn't doesn't piss us off. Doesn't that really doesn't bother us. So don't worry about that. Uh, March says the weather here in Oklahoma is very nice at the moment. About eighty Fahrenheit, with sunshine. Wow. Have you gotten deep into the fall weather yet? Fall being autumn. Yes, we have. Um. Certainly Thursday, Wednesday was very wet. Thursday was really wet and windy. It was, I think we were having a hurricane, dear. And actually there's a tree falling over just uh, near the road at the top there near me. There's actually a tree over. But it was very, very windy and wet on the Thursday. We've had a lot of flood in here. I fortunately don't live near any rivers or streams or anything like that. So no flooding for me, thank God. Um, Marge says, they tell us it's going to be a very dry winter in Oklahoma. Oh, that's that's never really a good thing because you want a bit of water in in uh, in, uh, in autumn and uh, winter, don't you? Uh, to, to, to fill up the reservoirs. Marge says, mum really liked the audio you sent her for a birthday. Yeah, because Marge's mum, she's lucky enough to still have her mum around. Um, she had her birthday this week and Marge sent us a little private email asking me to sing happy birthday and an MP3 for her, which was very happy to do. She says, I thank you. I know you did it during a low time of the week with you remembering the loss of your mothers and such. Yes, it was, it was a very low time. I get very, very low on the anniversary of uh, my mother. And also my birthday and Christmas, because you remember those wonderful, happy times that you used to spend with your family. And um, not that I don't have wonderful times now with my sister's family and her children. And this year, of course, two new babies as well. Uh, so that's 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 very much to look forward to. But um, yes, when you remember um, as a child, the, the wonderful times that you had with your mum and dad and two nans and my sister all sitting around the dinner room table and one by one, you know, he took them away. But what can you do? Marge says, do you have any sort of Thanksgiving type holiday there in the UK? I know you I know you aren't like here in the US, but something like a harvest festival or anything. Um, no, we don't have a, 
a Thanksgiving holiday. We have bank holidays, various times of the year where um, we have a Monday off. There's, there's, oh, let me think. There's the spring bank holiday at the beginning of spring. There's Easter bank holiday. There's Boxing Day. There's summer bank holiday. There's another one. Whitson? Whitson bank holiday, is it? Oh, I can't remember now. So we do have a few, but not, not like a Thanksgiving one, though. She says, when it comes to using a calculator, because we're talking about calculators or adding in my head, then I am stupid. Chris, I cannot count in my head at all. Well, that doesn't make you stupid. When I try to add numbers, I forget the number I left when I carry over. <laughs> so I suppose that means my intelligence is very low. I doubt your intelligence is very low, uh, Marge. You made me remember a time when I was working at McDonald's in the grill area and the electricity went off. We had a bit of food left and still selling it for about 15 minutes. So the only ones running the register could not give out change or add it in their heads. The manager was the only one who could do it. Yeah, and I, I'd be able to do that. You see, I'd be able to do that. I want you to know that a link you have on your Facebook page to animal abuse information enlightens me and I will no longer eat meat. Oh, Marge. Really? Really? Did, did, did that make you not eat meat anymore? I must, I must tell you, like, on my Facebook, once again, I've got Facebook, my Facebook username, uh, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And on there, quite apart from putting the uh, uh, updates for my shows, I put on there where I'm working on a particular night. Perhaps I share my thoughts with people. And sometimes my thoughts go into animal abuse things, which really do quite upset me. Um, and over the last year and a half, two years, I've been attracted to all these videos of how animals suffer when they are farmed. And it really is quite horrific. I could take a couple of the videos down and play them to you on here, but I think very much it's, it's your choice whether you want to go around looking for such things. And they're not hard to find. Pig cruelty, you could type in any of these things into pig cruelty, um, you know, pig cruelty, cow cruelty, um, animal abuse in China, anything like that, anything that you can think of, type it into YouTube and you will bring up an array of videos of how, how meat is produced in whatever country. And I find it absolutely horrific how some of these animals suffer. Even the ones... That I mean, it, it, the worst ones are the ones that are literally born, and from the day they are born, they suffer until the day they die. It really is absolutely horrific. And often, I might put up links on my Facebook wall to something like that, and you either click it if you want to, don't click it if you don't want to. That, stopped, that sort of thing stopped me eating meat um, about a year and three quarters ago now. And more recently, I stopped drinking cow's milk as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm slowly coming off the dairy products as well now. I drink soya milk. Soya milk goes in the tea. It tastes fine. It's no problem at all. That's what I drink now. Because once again, I started looking into the uh, milk uh, production industry. And it, that, that, that's, that's just as bad. You know, we picture in our minds lovely cows, happy walking around on the pasture, eating all the grass. But the fact is, the reason they produce so much milk is that they're forced to become pregnant all the time. And then what happens, and, and, and a lot of the time, is that the calves are born. Immediately, the calves are taken away from the mothers. For days afterwards, these mother cows are mooing, crying for their little babies. Never to be seen again. Some of them are killed within weeks and become veal. You know, <clears throat> and all these videos really upset me. Um, the whole chicken thing. Pigs. Pigs are, pigs are actually more intelligent than dogs. 
and I saw a video of pigs being slaughtered and they can see the one in front of them being slaughtered and as, they, as soon as they see that they try and get out of the pen and they get electric shocks in their heads and all sorts oh it's just awful just awful so I stopped and I wanted no part of that at all I become vegetarian there's plenty to eat I never go hungry uh, the only thing I, was, I would say some people have asked me did you do it to lose weight I said not really and um, besides it doesn't work I'm afraid you know if you're fat, it's probably nothing to do with the fact you eat meat or vegetables. That's just how it is. You know, you're eating too much or not exercising enough or doing both. So I become vegetarian. And it looks like Marge has as well. And you know, Marge, be very... Oh, who's that ringing there? Can you just wait a minute? I've got a call here. Just a second. Hello? Hello? That was the dentist. <laughs> we don't talk to them anymore. <laughs> I went ages and ages. I decided not to go to them anymore because they just, every time they did fillings and that, it would, it would hurt for days afterwards. I'm not even saying it was their fault, but there we are. Anyway, uh, I, don't, I don't give them the time of day. Don't give them the time of day. That's the end of that. Oh, they're trying to ring again now. Oh, how frightening. <laughs> I'm not going anymore to the dentist. No, thank you. If you don't know the story, the last two fillings they've done, um, they've become, my teeth have become very, very sensitive after those two fillings. And it went on for weeks and weeks and I decided I wasn't going to go to them again. And that's the end of it, really. They're trying to ring on my home phone now as well. Look at it, love. Withheld numbers. <laughs> oh, I'm just so naughty. Anyway, uh, so much. Uh, be interested to see if you manage to um, to uh, to hold on to that no meat eating thing. Um, if you don't, you don't. But good on you for trying, my darling. All right. Marge says I watched something about some dogs. Uh, I won't even talk about it. And now I can't stand to think of eating meat at all. Thank you so much. It it, it it's just horrific. You know, to me they are. They are little lives. And it's, I'm afraid most of the people I talk to, their answer, I, and I like, you know, go on YouTube and watch some of the videos. I don't force anyone to do anything. Um, I say, go on YouTube and watch some of the videos. And the, and the general answer is, oh, I don't want to know. I don't want to know how it's made. Well, you know, talk about bury your head in the sand. Even members of my family are, are, are the same. That That's the answer. I don't want to know. But please, it is a bit of a joke when you take your kids, uh, your children, I hate that word, kids, when you take your children out to a farm to see little animals and, and lambs and that running, oh, look at the lovely little lambs, and then Sunday lunch comes and you're bloody well eating one of them. <laughs> you know, it don't make sense. Oh, look at the lovely cows there. Aren't they beautiful? And you're drinking their milk that's come from the beautiful cows, but you don't know what's happened to that cow to get that milk out of it. It's horrible. It's really horrible. Marge goes on to say, uh, Chris, you talk about people saying weird things. I take my Boston Terrier, and I've seen pictures of this, it's great. On the back of my Honda Rebel in the box, on the back of it, that you saw the picture of it on Facebook. And guess what? I have been asked over and over, does she ride like that? I want to say to them, but I refrain from it, no, she jumps out every five feet. <laughs> of course she rides like that, or she wouldn't be in the box. Or another question, does she like riding in it? I guess so. She gets in the box by herself. I haven't asked if get her yet if she likes it or not. But so far, she rides peacefully and doesn't act up. So hopefully she likes it. <laughs> I think that's wonderful, Marge. Taking your pet for a ride on your motorbike. That is fantastic. It's funny you should mention your motorbike. I'm, I'm actually considering... I, I, I've never been on a motorbike. Can you believe that? I have never, ever, I've always been a cyclist from, a cyclist from a very little young age, a very little boy. Um, but I've never really, ever, ever been on the back of a motorbike. Um, actually, 
I, uh, there's been a couple of occasions now where I thought to myself, you know, if you had a bike, number one, they're much cheaper to run. Um, but number two, there, there's a couple of journeys during the week that I do. Uh, one's the quiz night on Tuesdays in Rotherhithe. Um, that I don't actually need to carry around much equipment. The Tuesday night, the rather high one, and that's that's that that's the that's the bastard journey. You know, it's 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 a bit of a journey that one, um, because of the traffic. So that one, um, Thursday night, I do a job in Camden, a uh, 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 Clapham. That doesn't require much equipment. Neither does the one on Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday do require equipment and therefore do require a car to carry around. But I've, I actually thought, you know, I, I might get, I don't know, I, might, I could book a couple of motorbike lessons couldn't i something like that do they provide a bike because obviously i don't have a, i wouldn't want to buy a bike just like that and then learn i think i'd like a couple of lessons first and then perhaps um uh, think about it i don't know i don't know anyway marge uh much more to come from your email <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm only halfway through that email. So if it's all right with you, Marge, I'm going to read that email out, uh, the rest of the email out, on the next show on Wednesday, OK? Because I'm out of time now. Thanks very much for watching and listening. Don't forget the email to this show. Any comments at all that you've got, anything you want to say, that what, what I've been talking about, um, or indeed anything else at all, please send them through. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co. UK, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Don't forget this show is also available on iTunes, either the audio version or the video version. And you can find that by just going to iTunes Podcasts and typing in United Kingdom Talk. OK, you should see them both come up there. A little logo, the sort of silver and uh, colour, red and blue and white Union Jack there. And uh, also... On YouTube, my YouTube username is youtube.com forward slash Chris Weirden UK. Main website for the show, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Well, I'm off to feed my mates cats now. See how they'll all be waiting now, gathering round my legs, waiting for their little breakfast. Thanks so much for watching and listening. See you Wednesday. Bye-bye.